that's why I bring in uh, Bobby Bonson, uh, a constitutional lawyer for that matter. I mean, in the mind of the Chief Justice, this matter was uh, at hand was a more of a constitutional issue than, than political. That's another issue that we'll come to. But uh, Bobby Bonson, you, you described this Supreme Court decision to dismiss the Speaker's application to overturn that ruling that blocked him from declaring those four seats as a, as a classic one, I mean, uh, and comprehensive and well-reasoned. What brought you to this conclusion? Well, I said the decision was a solid one. I didn't say it was right or it was wrong. Mm. I said it was solid in the sense that it had addressed all the issues that had been raised in the application. Right. And so if you go to court and you'd say that I want the Supreme Court to set aside its previous orders on the 18th of October, on these grounds, mm -hmm. and the Supreme Court take pains to respond to each of these grounds, mm -hmm. lawyers will say it is a well-reasoned judgment. So it right. is in that context that I said it was solid. Because Senior Martin and I were in court. If they had left some of the issues hanging, mm -hmm. they would have said, mm, what happened? They raised this issue, you didn't address it, and yet you have come to a conclusion. No, oh, Bobby, but they left something <coughs> hanging. Let me tell you, it's very important. When Tadio mm -hmm. Sori wrote that the Supreme Court was doing a partisan agenda, no, no, that means no, raised it. You no, see, they, they left it. No, no, that they was the kernel of the no, matter. No, no, they, they didn't leave it. There was a paragraph in his affidavit, <laughs> mm -hmm. I think two paragraphs, mm -hmm. that they said were scandalous mm -hmm. to the extent that one, I think the first one suggested that the Chief Justice was privy to a constitutional breach. It was stated there in the affidavit. I mean, yes. the partisan one. Yes, and that was, that was the second one. The second okay. one was that the decision, well, well, mm -hmm. the decision was intended to have a political undertone or serve a political purpose. Yes. So those two issues were raised, and then the response, I remember Justice Asari Dakon telling the counsel for the speaker that it is scandalous to put such matters in an affidavit because you do not have evidence to support it. And so you can sit maybe anywhere and then make those commentaries. But when you file an affidavit, and senior, you'll all agree that per the rules of court, every pleading or every affidavit that seeks to achieve a certain end beyond bringing facts and evidence before the court could be struck out. And so those issues were raised. And I heard Justice Asari Dakon, I mean, before the ruling was delivered mm -hmm. in the course of the discussions, mm -hmm telling the, the counsel for the speaker that these matters, the two paragraphs in the opinion, are scandalous to the extent that, as it stands now, there is no evidence that was attached to that affidavit. That, but, that the part the Supreme Court was taking was a partisan one? Exactly. Other than that, what it would have meant was that the Supreme Court may have asked the person who deposed to that affidavit, come and stand in the box and then demonstrate to us how the Supreme Court had given a decision that is intended to achieve a certain political end. So that is why I'm saying that I think they addressed all the issues. No, that's, and that was... That is outside that way alone. No, I but think I, it wasn't let, a let decision. Me, let, let, me, let me finish. Mm. So right. that issue of the scandalous nature of the, some of the affidavits, you realize that the Attorney General even didn't file an affidavit in opposition. Mm. And he sought to raise it on his feet. And the objection by Senior Sorry was that he should have come formally with that. So perhaps the Supreme Court thought that because it was not formally before them, there was no need maybe, maybe to include mm -hmm. it in a formal ruling, that they would have dealt with the matters that had been filed. So it was to that extent that I said, if you look at the issues that were raised, the, 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 the um, objection to the um, inclusion of Justice um, Gao, Gao mm -hmm. it was addressed, Gai Wu, it was a, that's the first yeah, thing. Yeah, that is Yes, 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 yes. It was, it was addressed. The issue of the fact that the Supreme Court didn't have jurisdiction, it was addressed. The issue of the fact that there was a breach of natural justice because the application was made ex parte, that was also addressed. And the fact that the speaker, whether the speaker had the right to reject the service, mm. that was also addressed. So that is why I said, if you look at all the issues that were raised in the application, the Supreme Court took pains to address each of them and Six. gave reasons why they decided to or why they agreed or disagreed with the proponents of those issues. I see. So it's not 
the, the description of the decision of the Supreme Court being a solid one mm -hmm. was not yeah. to yeah. say, based on your point, that yes. whether they were right or wrong. It was because they had given comprehensive explanation to exactly. the decisions they took. Exactly. Now, then I get to the, mm -hmm. the, the, the devil in the detail. Mm -hmm. Based on detail that was mm -hmm. given specifically, was the conclusion right or wrong? Okay, let me, let me explain my position on it. I am of the opinion that one, the raising the issue of the inclusion of Justice Gai Ernest Gaiu, that because he had been affiliated with a political party, he did not, he wasn't qualified to sit on the case, I thought was a moot question. Why is that? My reason is that and senior people, I kind of disagree with you with your position, and I'll bring it into mm. this. Mm. As to the president's power to appoint judges mm. to the Supreme Court, mm. it seems to, or your presentation suggests that it's like the president is the alpha and omega oh. of the appointment uh, of persons to the Supreme Court. Uh, no, I'm no, a no, realist. No. Let, let, let no. me explain why mm. I, I depart. Mm. And this is Justice and Esgaru's situation. The president only nominates to the Supreme Court, the nomination goes to Parliament. Mm. Parliament is made up of representative of the people. Mm. In this Parliament, mm. we have the privilege of what we are calling as the hang Parliament, almost split on equal political lines. When Justice Enes Gaou's nomination came to Parliament, I think there were two or three of them, the first badge were approved. Mm. I don't remember whether it was, there was a dissent. No. No, no. The firm boy is a member of the public. Uh, yeah, that, is what, that is what I'm looking yeah, at him. That is, what I'm looking at him. <laughs> okay. that is what I'm looking at him. Okay. That is what I'm looking at him. So the, the, the this second matter came before is, you. No, there were there were five. Mm -hmm. Three of them got approved. Mm -hmm. His and that of Judge Scumson. Yes. Delayed until about January. But they were about. voted upon by yeah, the appointment yes, committee. Yes. And the appointment committee. No. no they, oh. Yes. As for the appointment committee, mm -hmm. they make their decision. They brought the recommendation to the mm -hmm. floor. It is a plenary mm -hmm. that out of the five, mm -hmm. three got approval. Mm -hmm. But that of the, but the appointment who, committee presented them to parliament for approval. Yeah, the no, they, 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 they recommend. Mm -hmm. so, yes, yeah, so they re that is what I'm saying. They recommended them. all of them. That's right. Yes, and senior okay. here, who is an NDC member, is a member of the appointment committee. No, I'm not. But oh. I'll deal with those. Ma no, I'm not. Oh, I'm you're not. Because me. Alfred said it, so I thought. No, no, I'm not. <laughs> you are he not. Says what? I'm a member of parliament. So ah, okay. I thought he yeah. said the appointment come. But the but point I'm I, trying I, to I'll make. I'll go into the intricacies of that. Yes, point. the point I'm trying to make that if the NDC was of the opinion that the Mr. Gaiu was not qualified to sit at the Supreme Court because of his previous affiliation to a certain political party, they had the right to refuse. His appointment. Mm -hmm. Now, the Supreme Court, as it stands now, does not have any jurisdiction to say, after Parliament has approved somebody to sit at the bar, the Chief Justice and the other justices. At the bench. Sorry, sorry, at the bench. The Chief Justice and the other justices cannot say that because somebody had raised your previous affiliation to a political party, we do not think that you are disqualified or we do not think you are qualified to sit. That would mean, in my opinion, that the Supreme Court is usurping the powers of, 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 of Parliament. Because the ground, it's not as if you are saying that I have in my hands information that before you came to sit, the chairman of the MPP called you, or Mr. Fenyo Markin, who is a plaintiff in this matter, called you and said, do not come, or when you come and sit, reason along these lines. If we told those lines, what it means is that, because in any event, speak um, um, the Supreme Court judges, they vote. There's nothing in the Constitution that prevents them from voting. And so to say that, one, because of his previous affiliation to a political party, and I heard him say when he was vetted that he had denounced his uh, um, affiliation, I think it was one of the questions that yes. were asked, that yes. he had denounced mm -hmm. his affiliation to the, and no contrary evidence was produced that he was still a card-bearing member of that political party. Mm -hmm. So to that extent, I think that the Supreme Court was right in, 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 in refusing the objection on the basis that he was previously affiliated to a political party. Secondly, the issue of, sorry? 
Yes. Yes. Secondly, the issue of whether or not the Supreme Court had jurisdiction to entertain the writ in the first place. Okay, on the, on the matter of jurisdiction, before you get there, but to the extent that on this matter of mm -hmm. Justice Guy, to the extent that even though this matter you would say is, is legal and constitutional matter, mm -hmm. as the Chief Justice sought to put it, at the heart and base of this particular issue is politics. Mm -hmm. So would you say that having included someone who was previously associated with a particular political party that also has interest in this case was good for the optics, the perception going into this particular case? Alfred, you know... And that's why I said the Supreme Court itself... Oh, no, uh, uh, yes, I want... I want uh, uh, hold on. Uh, no. You know, the, 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 the issue of perception and you say at the heart of politics, for me, to be honest with you, we have a certain training as lawyers. All of us sitting here, our training as lawyers tells us that justice is dispensed according to three yardsticks. Case law, well-defined practice, and statute. So you can decide to throw politics into every single matter that appears before the Supreme Court. Everything, and, and I'll give you an example. When the, there was um, 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 the issue of the narcotics amendment bill or something that would allow um, use of cannabis, use of cannabis. Okay. the attorney general, this attorney general, went to the Supreme Court. The attorney general lost in this government. But it was an issue that they had said they needed the funds or something. There was a political discussion about it. Mm -hmm. The attorney general lost in this present government. And so sometimes when we generally throw issues that for every single matter that goes to the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. the Supreme Court must wear the political hat. I think it is dangerous for, for our democratic no, dispensation. No, no, you see that. To prove the rule. No, no, you see, but that is what I'm saying that. Oh, okay. Oh, 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 no, 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 you come, you, you have your, the, the, no, no, no. Cancel, the, the, the narcotics. No, there, there was a turning. Yes. Let me, what mm -hmm. happened was that in that matter, somebody alleged that section clause 43 of the law that sought to limit the THC value of the, of the narcotic content that should be approved under the law was not properly debated. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was what the gentleman took to court. That it was Attorney General that sponsored the bill. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't about money. It was about how long it took Parliament. In fact, they actually deposed to the fact that that provision, that amendment was introduced at about 5, 5.45 and by 5.50 it had been approved mm -hmm. and adopted and formed part of the law. Right. And in the opinion of the plaintiff, um, they, they were just they making an intervention, so please yes, make, it, yes, make it brief. Yeah, Parliament, ought, mm -hmm. Parliament ought to have debated the matter or even returned to the people the representatives to inquire more whether or not they were in favor. And when we were instructed, when it was struck down, and Parliament had to <laughs> react. What, what was struck down? That provision. So at the end of the day, the Attorney General's position yes, was yes, not taking, that yes, is all that I'm saying, that he lost. Money. Yeah, no, no, but the Attorney General, the the money, attorney general okay. also you, didn't understand parliamentary proceedings. But okay. the Supreme Court yes. did not agree with the Attorney General. Yes, that I, is, what, yes, that I, is I, the point I'm trying so to make. No, I brought in the money because there was political commentary that indeed that they needed that hurriedly done because it would bring some revenue. We, 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 we recall that, that discussion as well. So the point I was trying to make is that the Attorney General lost that matter in this mm -hmm. current <laughs> Supreme Court dispensation. And so to generally say that every matter that goes to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court must wear a certain political hat or there is politics at the heart of it. We cannot take away the politics. Every matter here, we can decide to throw in politics. But whether or not we should say that the reason why the Supreme Court ruled in A, ruled in B, was because of certain political um, 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 advantage or disadvantage. I think maybe, for lack of a better word, overreaching the substance of the constitutional dispensation. I, 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 I didn't make a general statement in my 
question. Mm -hmm. I was very specific about mm -hmm. this particular case. Yes. So in, in answering, I, I, I just don't want us to expand the tentacles of my question to cover every other issue. Mm -hmm. The specific matter on the table today it's in reference to this particular matter before the Supreme Court related to the speaker's decision as communicated on the four seats in contention, mm -hmm. which is a political matter in the legislature. Yes. Which has political implications. Yes. Now, because the Supreme Court has been roped in into a political matter, mm -hmm. you cannot delink or disassociate the politics of the matter from the constitutional nature of the matter. Maybe the political consequences. Of the, uh, and, and, and that's clear. Yes. So, if you agree, would you also say that including a judge who had previous association with a party to the political consequence of this case mm -hmm. on the matter in court for the optics and the perception was the right one? I don't think that there was any demonstration that the reasoning by that judge had been influenced by his previous political dispensation. Right. Other than that, if we go by that argument, I think the judges were Justice Enes Gayu, Mariama Ousu. Yes. The Chief Justice was in the middle, Justice Asiedu, and then Justice Asari Dakon. Senior, if I remember, all these judges were appointed to the Supreme Court by the current mm -hmm. president. Yes. And if you look at the, num the, 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 the um, judges that are there, mm -hmm. I think, uh, apart from a few, three or four, I recall. Two. Only two. Mm -hmm. Yes, the rest were appointed by the current president. Mm -hmm. And so if we go by that reasoning, then one may also argue that uh, no, none of the judges there also qualified because Senior Tebu had made that point mm -hmm. that if you have a president who you would have to get somebody who would align with your reasoning and all of that. So mm -hmm. it would mean that none of the judges there would be deemed to be independent enough because at the end of the day, it is a political question. It will benefit one particular political party. But back to my argument on the jurisdiction, mm -hmm. that we have said that the Supreme Court has the original jurisdiction to interpret constitutional matters. Right. And so if there is a matter that the Constitution says the High Court should have the jurisdiction to declare a seat vacant, mm -hmm. I heard the Supreme Court say that they think in their opinion that there are constitutional, various or varying constitutional interpretation. And so they want to exercise that jurisdiction to interpret what those articles mean. Mind you, they have not said that they think that it means A or it means B. Mm -hmm. They said on the 11th, we will know whether right. they will give their judgment or perhaps adjourn again for mm -hmm. another day to give their judgment. Mm -hmm. And so they, say, they said that if somebody goes to the high court mm -hmm. and various contentions are raised as to what the Article 97 means, because we have not yet had a decision from the Supreme Court that has interpreted that Article 97. Mm -hmm. There are cases that we all thought the, 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 the articles were very clear. And we've had Professor Sari, I think one of the... Um, um, the one he did in 2003, 2004, that dealt with whether there's a, um, a gap in the, I've forgotten the particular article. Um, the very first one that they int firmly introduced the purposive interpretation. Ah, AG, the yes, president that's going out and whether he's still president exactly. or any person is. And we all read it and I don't think anybody had raised that issue that's formally be before, the, before the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. But Professor Sari came and raised it and the Supreme Court said, oh, there's a problem with the Constitution. You have raised a lot of constitutional interpretation issues before the Supreme Court, which until you raised it, nobody had formally brought it to the attention of the Supreme Court. So I agree with you that if the Supreme Court thinks that there are various possible interpretations, let's give them the opportunity. Let's see what they will say. After all, the Constitution anticipates that one of the sources of laws in Ghana mm -hmm. are judgments and decisions mm -hmm. of courts of competent jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. So if the Supreme Court interprets it A or B, it will guide us until they themselves have found enough reason to depart from it. So to that extent, I think the Supreme Court's jurisdiction to interpret those provisions may have been properly invoked. Now the next issue, which is very, very important, is whether or not ex parte applications could have been filed in, those, in that manner mm -hmm. for stay of execution. When I saw the title of the motion or the ruling, I was very surprised. 
because in our practice uh, uh, or what we have been reading, mm -hmm. we are used to ex parte applications being filed in a certain way under certain circumstances. That you'd say that there are judgments of the court, and this is an argument that was urged by Senior Tadio. Sorry, mm -hmm. there are judgments of the court that you say that you seek to stay, and to that extent, you must even serve the other party notice. And so, to exercise that jurisdiction to stay that uh, ruling by the um, 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 speaker in that circumstances was quite unusual. But I would want to read something, Sina, can I borrow? Mm -hmm. And the, yeah, the, the rules yeah, book. And it was, read, it was read in court. Mm -hmm. So I would want to read it. If you look at, uh, so this is the High Court Civil Procedure Rules. But we know that where the Supreme Court rules do not make mm -hmm. provision for certain practice or procedure, you go to the High Court. Now, Order 19, Rule 3, talks about ex parte motions. Now, it says that, subject to Rule 1, Sub rule three, an application by motion may be made ex parte where any of these rules provide, where any of these rules specifically provide, or where having regard to the circumstances, the court considers it, considers it appropriate, no, considers it proper to permit the application to be made. So in responding to the issue of the natural justice, the Supreme Court relied on this. They read it in court. Mm -hmm. That under Order 19, Rule 3, 1, it doesn't give the exceptions to the kind of applications they can entertain ex parte. To be frank, I had not, my attention had not been drawn to it, but they read it. They said, look at the all, having regard to the circumstances. Now, they said that they thought that the circumstances were ripe to entertain the application ex parte. Because an application on notice had been okay, filed. Before, just before you call, I think somebody was saying that you cannot make the application ex parte. No, no, I said the application for stay of execution uh -huh. was made ex parte. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the argument was that what we are used to ah, okay. is that application for stay of execution also notice. must okay. always be yeah. on, on notice. notice. Okay, that's okay. okay. right. And that was one of the bases for the application to set aside that October 18th. I get you. I get so you. the Supreme Court, in responding to that argument, mm -hmm. read Order 19, Rule 3. I mean, even without reading it, the court usually has inherent jurisdiction. Go on. But, but, I but, but that was example. one es essential ground. Mm. And the Supreme Court said that it says there clearly that having regard to the circumstances, now they said the circumstances that they elected to rely on was that there was an application on notice to restrain the speaker from going ahead to deliver the ruling on that day. However, when the application or notice was served on the speaker, the speaker returned the service, and the speaker went ahead to deliver his ruling. Now, in the mind of the Supreme Court, they thought that those circumstances were enough to entertain an application for stay of execution. Now, whether we like it or not, the rules of court give discretion to judges. In fact, we were taught in law school that 90% of the rules of court fix, fixes discretion with judges. The Supreme Court decided to exercise discretion to entertain the application for stay of execution under these circumstances. Mm -hmm. And so they said, we have the discretion. Do you agree? The answer was yes. He said, we have chosen to exercise the discretion this way. Now, they went ahead to say that to avoid the situation where the exercise of the discretion may give undue disadvantage to one side of the case, we want to go straight to the substance of the matter. So instead of the usual timelines of when you file a rate, after 14 days, you are now, is, is it 14 days in here? You must mm. now file your mm. statement of mm. case. Mm. Mm. Then the yeah. other side must be served. Yeah. So if we go through with that processes, we'll be going into December. So they are saying that to avoid the hardship of the ex parte ruling we gave, we have asked the attorney general to file his statement of case within seven days. Mm -hmm. We have ha asked the plaintiff to file a statement of case within seven days. And we have asked the speaker to file a statement of case also within seven days, so that they have abridged the time, so that whatever hardship that our ex party ruling would have given would be, should I say, pacified by us abridging the time. Okay. So that, it, that every court under these circumstances has that discretion. Okay. Maybe if I was sitting there, 
I would have exercised the discretion differently. Maybe if Senior Martin yeah. was sitting there, he would have exercised. Oh, absolutely, you know that very much. You know that. You know that. And you know, you know where it would have gone. To. Yes, but it doesn't mean <laughs> that the Supreme Court did something unlawful. So you see where I come back to alignment. You see, they say but, philosophical but, but, yes, alignment. But you've, you've used mm -hmm. the word that is that I can challenge. You said mm -hmm. perceptions mm -hmm. and those no, things. No, I said alignment. Hey, when you are choosing mm -hmm. president, nominating. Hey, he has to be sure they are aligned. That one, don't play with it. I'm not, I'm not playing with it, but what I'm saying is that if you want to see it like that throughout, then it will mean that you are saying that the justices no longer dispense justice in accordance with statute, oh, case okay. law, but, and what defined but, but, but practice. Also, also in, in, in exercising discretion, as is the Supreme Court is clothed with, they are not to do it whimsically and capriciously. Yes. Right? Yes. So in this particular instance that you underscore the fact that the Supreme Court justice decided, in fact the CJ and the court decided to exercise discretion mm -hmm. to, as it were, speed up the matter mm -hmm. by cutting down the time to avoid the eventual consequence of this matter going through the normal course of time, which would have then have the matter be heard sometime in December, then essentially these persons, their constituents mm. will not have representation, mm. and so on. In the matter of, of Sal, which has been brought in now, since the exercise of this discretion is not supposed to be whimsical and capricious, would you have expected that the Supreme Court could have also exercised that discretion to speed up the matter of Sal as well? Alfred, um... You know, I don't have all the facts on the matter of Sir, but I've heard a few comments being made mm -hmm. that the original writ or action was commenced in the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court declined jurisdiction. Then it went back to the High Court. And I'm here, I'm, I mean, I'm mm -hmm. hearing for the first time that the High Court says that it should, it doesn't have jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. It should go back to the Supreme Court. I don't know, I don't know when the matter was filed at the Supreme Court when the, the Supreme Court delivered the decision, when the matter went to the High Court, when the High Court delivered the decision, and whether or not after the High Court has delivered the decision, a new action has indeed been commenced at the Supreme Court. I do not know. Because until you invoke the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court cannot sit and say, okay, I have heard the matter of sir, the party should come, we want to adjudicate. Somebody must invoke the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. I do not know if that has been done. I have yes, I, let so, me show you. Yes, so I'm saying that I cannot speak to timelines in respect of Sal. Look, there is the case of the Valentine um, Jache. That's the mm -hmm. one you are talking about. Valentine Edem Jache versus Henry Ametefe and the chairman of Hohoi constituency, NDC, blah, blah, blah. It is in the, the Supreme point, Court. Yeah, oh, yeah, 2020. So they went to the Supreme Court 20, 24th June 2020. That's the thing. So the Supreme Court saw that Sal was going to be disenfranchised. They didn't say anything. They went by the old ruling that, or the old principle that if you are creating a constituency, it will take effect after the current elections. That's to say there was an impending elections 2020. This constituency you want to create won't take effect in 2020. It should go to 2024. So that's what people are crying about. So, that you could see it clearly coming. So that the this Supreme Court has delivered a decision. Yes, 24th June 2020. So then the matter is no longer pending before the Supreme Court. Yes, so they are saying that the time it came before the Supreme Court, you could see it coming. That these people, with what you are deciding, it means that they won't get, the South people will not get their constituency for the 2020 elections. Okay. And yet, you use the old principle. You know, it didn't start, this not, it's not this judge case that first established. Mm -hmm. There were previous decisions. There was the one even Kingsley or former boss, uh, my in-law, Dr. Ayini did. Oh, uh, yeah, my <laughs> wife. <laughs> yeah, you too, yeah. Let's, let's go. Let's, let's go. Let's go. Let's, let's proceed. Let's proceed. Go. So, it's a joke that uh, I'm yeah. not really. Yeah. 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 You said it here so, before. That's let, let's right. go. On. Mm. So the point that people are making is that 24th June 2020, when the Supreme Court was delivering its decision in the Jache case versus Ametefe. It was clear that going into 2020 elections, the SAR people will not get a constituency. They will not have an MP. Yet the Supreme Court stuck to the old principle in the Constitution that, listen, if you are creating a constituency, a, a constituency, it will take effect after the elections. After, but not 
in the so coming election. They want that the Supreme Court delivered a decision mm -hmm. based on established precedents, yes. but you do not agree with that decision. Oh, are you drawing me in into rate? Because the argument you want when my opinion. Drew, I'm just trying to explain. I thought that maybe the rate is still pending oh, at the Supreme Court. No, and that's the, the, the Supreme Court is refusing to hear the matter. That was what I was because oh. you said what about you want my opinion. Oh, quickly, oh, I'll give you a high for me. Once the, I the, saw the that direction of if the question want to use was the specific concern that the Supreme Court expressed in the fact that mm -hmm. these four persons, uh -huh. their seats being declared vacant, uh -huh. their constituents will be deprived representation. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Okay, so people are On saying that when the Supreme that. Court was deciding this case, it was also clear to them that with this decision, well, this said it here. Uh -huh. said it here. and then when Jati Kwesin's case came, they hadn't decided yet. Yet yeah, they said no, he should not sit in parliament. Didn't they deprive citizens of their representation? Yes, I, I, right? I expressed and my case, disagreement uh -huh. with the Jati Kwesin case. And so I'm okay. just the intention explaining. that was uh -huh. given. Uh -huh. I expressed my disagreement okay. with it. Okay, okay. Yes. So that's, 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 that's the point. Okay, please, please. Let me perception about this on the court. Conclude on the yes, point. and so if you if you go to the exercise of discretion, mm -hmm. once the constitution or the rules of court have given it to the judges, whether high courts, district courts, court of appeals, supreme court, they are there to exercise their discretion. They could be right, they could be wrong, but as long as they could trace the exercise of that authority to rules of court or the constitution, you cannot necessarily say that they have acted unlawfully. So. The argument I'm making is that, yes, mm. if perhaps I was there or you were there, you could have chosen to exercise the discretion differently. But you and I are not the mm. ones there. Mm. So if they are there and they've exercised the discretion, you could throw in whatever, if you say it's politics, it is that, it is this. But at the end of the day, their decision on the true and proper meaning of that Article 97 1G, they said mm. they will give it on the 11th. And they can actually uphold the speaker's interpretation. Or right. they can depart from the speaker's interpretation. I, it's up to them to do I, it. I, well, we will see. Eleventh is just nine. Eleventh <laughs> is just nine days away. You, 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 and you, you, uh, you know, please, <laughs> let me bring in. No, don't draw him into this. <laughs> <laughs> he an officer, is an officer. Is an officer of the court. Uh, uh, yes, I beg you. Give it uh, so you, you, you can't. No. Resist, resist that temptation. 